Hello, my name is Mark and welcome to I'm Organic Gardening. Today I want to show you something very special because we had a very, let's say, unusual winter. It usually gets very cold and we get, you know, at least a foot of snow. This year we barely got any snow, we got lots of rain, and the temperatures have been abnormally high. But I want to show you how things change on my farm and also inside my garden. And today I want to show you how that has that weather has changed and is brought on this other crop that I seeded and it's taking over immensely and it's helping the bees and without further ado I want to show you what's happening in this field this is my field number five I have 22 acres that I grow organically I don't use any chemicals I don't use any fertilizer or any kind organic fertilizer nothing I rely on simply a cover crop now with this happening, I just saw a couple bees around, which is just odd to be out this early. Now I want to show you the field and how beautiful it is and what the surprise has happened. And you'll see it and you're like, wow, that just has taken off immensely. And the best thing I've learned this year, because I had a lot of geese on my farm, uh, three to 400 geese, and they've eaten down my winter rye cover crop. But there's other cover crop that I sow and it's never taken off this well because, again, I think it's due the weather now uh, let me show you this and it's called purple dead nettle and there's also hen bit in there too I move the camera over so you can see this better now hopefully you can see it it's very bright out today but here I have a row of winter rye that's about uh, five feet wide and the geese came in and ate all this but on both sides is purple dead nettle and hen bit and I'll show you a close-up of it very shortly and that's that beautiful purple haze that's blooming right now that are feeding bees and I've never seen bees out this early uh, at the end of March I just saw a couple not a lot so things are progressing very nicely and these clumps over here on the side are also and I let them grow naturally because that's going to penetrate the soil deep down in the ground and let water in and what this is over here these clumps you're seeing they're not hostas that's dock that's um, I believe uh, uh, skinny leaf dock or they go by several different names in different areas of the world but that's dock growing in the ground and that's perfectly fine what I like about that is when I grow my spaghetti squash here down this row that I have also and it's very good for it on the dock you see how they kind of make a dome there well that's a great place for frogs to live that the hawks can't get to them or anything else either so I have frogs I have centipedes uh, any kind of uh, let's say larger animal that doesn't bur uh, burrow in the ground that much has a shelter and keeps out of the let's say the way of uh, hawks and eagles on my property here's a much better view of what I'm talking about see they're all starting to bloom very nicely they have those nice purple leaves on it and they have these small little purple flowers that will come up later and show uh, more color but they're just starting right now and again it's the end of March and all this is taking off and this is a beautiful cover crop it will only grow about let's say uh, I'm gonna say anywhere from six to ten inches tall and won't go any higher and also too it uh, gives all the beneficial insect cover it will die off naturally after it blooms and does this much better job in the future this beautiful purple haze this time of the year is really enjoyed by all the beneficial insects that are slowly coming out of hibernation and will be later on and now when I when I mentioned before that all of a sudden like says that's my winter right cover crop on your right hand side is the screen and then I got purple dead nettle on the left now when I grow something over here, when that starts having a problem with, say, uh, bad insects, the good insects are here, then will come over and eat those bad insects. That's the reason for other types of areas, and I'll go into more detail in the future. This is just a beautiful site I want to share with you now that is showing all this and is just doing a fantastic job. And again, I don't have to worry about things, and I'll show you in the future videos what I'm going to do with this area but it's just again it's another let's say two months before I can really plant anything outside here that will give any let's say warmth that I need to get those plants in the ground then I can't do it ahead of time 
I also want to give you the dimensions of this field here. It's about 200 feet wide from side to side. Now, and also, where you can see the houses in the background, that's my neighbor's way in the back. That's about 400 feet away. So this is about two feet by 400 feet deep, and that's about uh, so, uh, close to about two acres. And here we can see, we get a close up there, and you can see those little nice, it's, again, it's very bright out today and sunny. It's a gorgeous day here. And you can just see those pink, uh, pinkish purple lavender flowers and just adoring this beautiful day and contributing to putting, uh, let's say, nutrients back in the soil, taking carbon out of the atmosphere and, you know, uh, putting it in its leaves and then pushing it down inside the ground here in exudates and to feed my soil ahead of time. So here we have a very good side-by-side -side example. Over here we have our purple dead nettle and we have our, uh, I say our light purplish or dark color on top of the sets of leaves that we're gonna give our flowers soon. And you can see the shape of the leaf also too, those green leaves. And over here we have henbit and those leaves are totally different or foliage is totally different than the purple dead nettle. Again, these are herbs. You can eat both of them. I would recommend looking up and checking into uh, what is good and uh, recipe wise and also uh, caution wise about eating them and washing them. Now, these two together here are a fantastic cover crop in my area. It's a natural thing that blooms. And again, I found out that the geese don't eat this. I also want to show you this little experiment that's going on here. I planted my garlic very late this year. I was able to get it at a discount and then we had some really cold weather that froze the ground so I wasn't able to get to it. Now over here between these two boards is where I planted the garlic and it's very short still. I'm glad I planted it late because we had such a, a mild winter. Now it's not that very tall yet and I'm happy that the geese didn't eat most of it. There's a couple bulbs that didn't come up maybe because the weather wasn't just uh, particularly right and was later planning so I want to show you this and how this came up here I knocked back the purple dead nettle and hen bit here so I can plant and I wanted to see a difference and I'll show you shortly here what happened is that I just decided to let's say remove the cover crop plant these in here I believe I did it a little bit after Christmas time or the beginning of January is when I planted these uh, garlic bulbs up and they're doing quite well. I expect a very good crop from them. So let me show you the other things that I planted maybe, let's say, uh, three weeks earlier when it got warm out uh, prior to this. And this is what amazes me. And you always have to try this for things in your garden. And this is one of those examples. So this is in the same uh, area as the other garlic, which is more to my right. And what I did here, which is amazing, is I wanted to know if I could plant garlic inside this purple dead nettle and hen bit when it was young and mature. I just took the bulb and stuck it right in the ground. And now you can see that all this other stuff isn't crowding it out. And this is one a good example of where you can, you know, let's say a companion plant or mix and mingle things together. And and it's just doing extremely well. You can see that row of garlic there just popping up inside that purple dead nettle and hen bit, and it's doing extremely well. Now there's some, uh, let's say, light green leaves on top because of the freezing weather, but everything's good or wind burn. We've had a lot of crazy weather lately. But again, I want to show you this to you is because you should always experiment a little bit in your garden. And because each area is different, what works for me might not work for you or it will work for you 100%. So these are good examples of what you can do and don't be fearful to try things. Thank you so very much for watching this video and enjoying the, this beautiful outside weather with me today. It's about 52 degrees, just gorgeous and sunny. And again, this is just doing so well. Have a great day and please subscribe and give it a good thumbs up. I'll give you a call in the future and with more videos and let you know what's going on. Thanks.